Good morning. We are here on the second day of the IFOAM World Congress in Istanbul. We are talking with Markus Arbenz, IFOAM Executive Director, and Frank Eihorn from Helvetia, Switzerland, and IFOAM World Board. They will give us a short resume of the first day of the conference. Please, yeah, as Marcus. You said, the Organic World Congress is in process, and we have a process here of getting more knowledge, getting new insights. Uh, the process going through analysis, through tackling issues, through building strategies, and eventually a step into action. That's what we started to do. That's what the main track, the innovation of this Congress, is built in discussion forums, partly with panel discussion, partly with fishbowl discussions, has, is happening right now, and those people actually try to create new content. Yeah, and in these discussions we realize that there is a growing consensus outside of the organic movement that organic agriculture can contribute to quite a lot to the global challenges we have, not only the ones we already are talking about quite a lot, environment, climate change, soil, but also about the challenges like food security, better nutrition, better health. And um, in order to position now organic agriculture as a tool to um, further development agendas, to uh, implement policies which are targeting these goals, um, it is very important that we reach out beyond the organic family, that we are partnering with um, organizations that have similar goals, that are, we are informing governments about these contributions organic agriculture can make, so that we get a much bigger uh, outreach and that we can position organic agriculture as something which is delivering common goods. Um, in order to position ourselves in that way, we also need to adopt a certain modesty, be realistic about the limits of organic agriculture so that it is embraceable by others. And it is important that we are um, yeah, doing kind of literacy training for the people outside who have maybe a very biased view on what organic agriculture is. Well, yeah. I think there were other points. Yeah. Organic 3.0, this was the keyword, the buzzword in the 2014 when it was launched. We all agree that we have to make a step from 2.0 of present day to 3.0, but we don't know yet how that is. Uh, there are several think tanks operating at the moment. They really try to bring content, and what is happening here is actually to inform those on a very broad base what should be new. I can't inform yet what is exactly is this Organic 3.0, but what I can say that new ideas are created, and the most exciting one, I think, is that organic agriculture of the future or of the present is a certification paradigm. So it is certified, but maybe we can think other options than only certified. And how to deliver a conformity assessment, that's the big question, and that is actually through creating transparency and through creating relationship much, much more with ICT technologies and uh, tackling actually themes, for example, true cost accounting, which really bring in transparency into the whole thing without only relying on a certified. Mm -hmm. One of the buzzwords was we need to get from blah, blah to do, do. So who are the drivers? What are the drivers who get us out of this niche of less than 1%? How can we reach scale? Everybody agreed that market pull is a very important driver, so we discussed ways to better engage the different actors in the market chain, the retailers, the traders, but also the consumers, how to reach to these consumers with what, uh, what messages. Um, not only about these contributions to global challenges, but also reaching the hearts of the consumers. It is good product for them, it is not only healthy, but it's also tasty, and it connects with the farmers, with the field. And uh, the question is then how to convey these messages. Their media play an important role, bank on upcoming trends which are there, use these opportunities to create awareness in the media, but also use new technologies, social media, to convey these messages. We heard a lot of examples where that worked very, very well in Canada, for example. But also think about uh, what positive role governments can play. They can become a major 
per driver in some of the countries. They can do certain good things to support organic agricultural growth. And last but not least, to also engage with the new generation, bring young people into this, um, help them that they can get a place in this organic uh, sector. Mm. These are the points. Yeah. So what do you especially expect, because Turkey is now uh, uh, the, the land of uh, IFOAM Congress, uh, will it be uh, helpful for the development here, for the movement here? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this is one of the reasons why Turkey wants this Congress, why Turkey wants us to come here, actually to support the message. They are in a very exciting phase of their societal development and organic is part of it. Organic is part of the debates which is happening in this society and uh, they are banking at the moment very much on export. Uh, it's a very important production country for the European uh, market, but they realize now that it's for the local market is crucial to build that up and actually to have organic present uh, in the market but also in the mind of people and it, there's a lot of action particularly here in Istanbul with street markets with people engaging and really wanting that from bottom up yeah. but also governments which are more and more supportive to this uh, side yeah. and this is uh, strong NGO or uh, association of uh, Budai that is very uh, dedicated to, to help the organic uh, movement here in Turkey. I can say that Buddha is taking really lead in the organic movement in Turkey, but we have to state that it's not only Buddha, there is actually a wealth of organization and there is also wealth of initiative. We have awarded award, it is the Wonder World Award almost every time a Turkish initiative. We have Anatolian farmers which really have impressive how they unite, how they engage and uh, so more, the more, let's say, the more traditional side, the Anatolian side, is also quite engaged actually and they do impressive stuff. They have a strong farmer space, about 45,000 yes. organic farmers already know. Yeah. Impressive. Okay, so we are looking forward for the second day Absolutely. and then for the General Assembly. Uh, and thank you for this talk. Thank you. For the thank you.